KTVU Channel 2. Can you tell me what your reaction is to your arrest and the charges? State Senator Leland Yee out on bond tonight and refusing to answer questions. Tonight, the corruption case against him and a call for him to resign. Good evening. I'm Julie Hayner. And I'm Frank Somerville. A stunning fall from grace. State Senator Leland Yee handcuffed in the back of a law enforcement vehicle. He is charged with conspiracy to traffic firearms in exchange for campaign donations. FBI agents today carried out raids across three cities. 26 people arrested among among them, a notorious former San Francisco gang leader and a former San Francisco school board member. Tonight, Leland Yee is out on a $500,000 bond. He is charged with conspiracy to traffic firearms and six counts of fraud. He is scheduled to return to federal court on Monday morning. We have team coverage tonight. KTVU's Janet Katsuyama will detail the FBI's case. We begin, though, with KTVU's Amber Lee, and she asked Leland Yee's attorney about the charges. Amber? Frank, we're in the Sunset neighborhood where the state senator lives. Now, we came to his home behind me, and he did not answer his door, but we did catch up with him as he left the federal courthouse earlier tonight. Excuse us, excuse us. Senator Yee, can you tell me what your reaction is to your arrest and the charges? Dressed casually in a blue jacket, the state senator walked out of the federal building on $500,000 bond. He got into a waiting car without answering any questions. But there are many questions about the multiple federal criminal charges Yee now faces. We're getting now. Yee, who advocated for gun control laws, now faces charges of conspiracy to traffic firearms without a license, illegally importing them, and bribery. The senator's attorney says he hasn't had a chance to read through the charges detailed in this 137-page complaint. Uh, we haven't had a chance to really read it from front to back. Uh, we'll defer any comments on any allegations made till we've had a chance uh, to sit down and go through that. Senator Yee, can you say anything? He was arrested this morning at his home and driven to federal court where he spent 10 hours today. He appeared before a judge along with other defendants who were also charged as part of this case. According to court documents, Yi performed formed, quote, official acts in exchange for donations from undercover FBI agents as he tried to dig himself out of a $70,000 debt incurred after losing the race for San Francisco mayor in 2011. Yee's decades in public service started when he was elected to the San Francisco School Board in 1988. He went on to serve as a San Francisco supervisor and later was elected to the assembly. He's pretty straightforward guy. Carl Chan, a Chinese-American activist, describes Yee as a hardworking and effective legislator who's responsive to his constituents. Chan says he recently worked with Yee about the Chinese community's opposition to affirmative action. I've known him for so many years, and, and that's the reason why uh, it's very hard for me to believe uh, the accusation. We asked Yee's attorney how the senator plans to plead to the charges. I'm not commenting on anything specific to him. Uh, every person charged with an offense in America uh, is clothed with the presumption of innocence, and he's like anyone else in that regard. Many people in the Chinese community spoke with say they're disappointed, shocked, and sad that Yi, who's running for Secretary of State, is now facing these allegations. One community leader tells me, quote, this is a black guy concerned about the possible negative impact on other Asians running for public office. Live in San Francisco, Amber Lee, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Two investigates tonight, the five-year federal probe investigating Yi and a notorious Chinatown felon. Kate Fuse, Jana Katsuyama has been pouring over the criminal complaint and she's in the newsroom now with that part of our coverage. Jana. Julie, I read the indictment. It explains that undercover FBI agents met Yi as they were investigating notorious ex-con Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow. The indictment says that Yi accepted campaign donations from undercover FBI agents in exchange for political favors. The indictment says that as Leland Yee was campaigning for San Francisco mayor in 2011 and recently for Secretary of State, he was conducting illegal business with undercover FBI agents. The indictment says the meetings were arranged through Yee's close associate, Keith Jackson, who served with Yee on the San Francisco School Board and was helping with the political campaigns. The FBI says Jackson had ties with the Chi Kong Tong, or CKT Association, in San Francisco's Chinatown, headed by 54-year-old Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow. Chow, who was profiled in a History Channel documentary, had been convicted in 2000 of federal drug, arson, racketeering, robbery, and murder-for-hire charges, but was later released from prison 
in exchange for helping the government prosecute another case. Chow had been lauded by local politicians as an example of a criminal turned community leader. The indictment says undercover FBI agents infiltrated Chow's organization, posing as businessmen and an Italian mob member, and became involved in money laundering schemes, drug and arms dealing. They began asking Jackson and Yee for political favors in exchange for campaign donations above the legal limits. The indictment says Jackson and Yee openly discussed how they would break up a large sum of cash into legitimate donations. Among the alleged favors, the complaint states Yee wrote a letter to a manager at the California Department of Public Health on behalf of the undercover agent's business interests in exchange for a $10,000 contribution. Another undercover agent asked Yee how much he would want to introduce marijuana legislation. Senator Yee said that he would have to think about the number. The biggest charge, states Lee directly agreed to set up multi-million dollar gun sales between an undercover agent and an arms dealer Yee knew. The indictment says Yee asked the undercover agent if he wanted automatic weapons and explained how the agent could mail a list of desired weapons to Yee's source in the Philippines. The indictment says Yee did tell the agents he could not talk policy at the same time he asked for money. Agents say Yee also told them he was unhappy with his life and at one point said, I'm just trying to run for Secretary of State. I hope I don't get indicted. Live in the newsroom, Jana Katsuyama, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Now here are potential penalties that Yee faces. Prison sentences up to 20 years for each of six charges. An additional five years in prison for a seventh charge. And penalties of $250,000 for each of the seven counts. Today's raids were carried out in at least three cities. Sacramento, San Mateo, and San Francisco. In San Francisco, police and federal agents swarmed the headquarters of the Chinese Freemasons on Spofford Street. According to the indictment, Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow is the leader of that organization. Today, our cameras captured firefighters carrying pry bars, other tools, even chainsaws in and out of the building. A source says they were trying to use the tools to open an antique safe. We also saw agents leave the building with garbage bags and boxes of evidence, but investigators wouldn't comment on specifically what they confiscated. Democratic leaders in Sacramento are already calling on Leland Yee to resign. He represents District 8, covering a large part of San Francisco and San Mateo counties. Just under 250,000 people cast votes there in the 2010 state Senate race. As KTVU's Ken Pritchett reports, Yee's arrest today is just the latest in a series of scandals to rock the Democratic Party. These are agents of the FBI hauling away several boxes of potential evidence from the Capitol office of Senator Leland Yee. His office roped off under guard all morning. Very unusual, very distressing, um, um, actually shocking. San Francisco Assemblyman Tom Amiano has known Senator Yee and his family for years, but says he learned of the story with the rest of us as the day went on. I understand that Mr. Yee is in, uh, in custody, um, and that, that is a very, very uh, heavy thing to uh, uh, react to and and try to sort it out, you know. And as the search of Yee's office went on for hours, few lawmakers wanted to speak. The California Senate hit by a similar FBI search just last year. Senators Ron Calderon and Rod Wright are both on leave from the Senate. Calderon charged with bribery and corruption. Wright convicted of election fraud. Now a third scandal within a year for the California Senate. Without prejudging the facts that uh, I'm extremely uh, disappointed and upset. That reaction from Senate President Daryl Steinberg came before this afternoon's hearing in a federal court, before the details of FBI allegations of corruption and gun trafficking were unveiled. By 3 p.m., the tone had changed. The demand of Senator Yee's fellow senators, clear. I want to, on behalf of my colleagues today, call on Senator Yee to resign. Leave. Don't burden your colleagues and this great institution with your troubles. Leave. In that press conference, you could hear the anger. Senator Steinberg says he wanted to express his revulsion at today's events, but he did say the work of the Senate would go on. If Senator Yee refuses to resign, Senator Steinberg says he and his colleagues will take to the floor and vote to suspend him. In Sacramento, Ken Pritchett, KTVU Channel 2 News. 
Yee is currently campaigning for statewide office. He is running in the Democratic primary for Secretary of State. Tonight at 1030, we are looking into where today's charges leave that race. And at KTV.com, you'll find extensive coverage of today's charges, including a copy of the criminal complaint you can read for yourself. Notorious former Chinatown gang leader and Keith Jackson, Yee's political consultant. We have team coverage tonight, starting with Joe Vasquez, who has been on this story since 6 o'clock this morning. Joe? Liz, and it has been an absolutely surreal day, and especially in the courtroom earlier today, as we sat there and we saw State Senator Leland Yee shackles around his ankle, his face looking dejected as he learned about a litany of federal charges against him and the possibility, if he's convicted, that he could get a sentence of up to 125 years in prison. State Senator Leland Yee left the courthouse tonight with no comment. One of the Bay Area's highest ranking politicians now finds himself facing public corruption charges as well as charges related to selling weapons. His attorney says his client will plead not guilty. Does he say that he's innocent? We'll always, as in every case, enter um, not guilty pleas. And then the case takes on a life of its own with discovery being provided, motions being made, uh, sometimes a case ending up in trial. Beginning early this morning, the FBI conducted a series of raids across Northern California, eventually arresting more than two dozen people with crimes ranging from selling drugs and weapons to murder for hire. Basically, he's being accused of trading political favors in exchange for money. KPIX5 legal analyst Melissa Griffin says the charges against Yee stem from his failed run for mayor, which left him owing money and he needed money for his current run for Secretary of State. He's trying to ret retire this $70,000 in debt, and it seems like around that time, he and his political consultant yeah. embark on this campaign to retire it. And so they begin asking people, among them federal undercover officers, for money for that fund. The feds say Yee discussed the possibility of acquiring weapons, including shoulder-fired missiles from the Philippines in exchange for campaign contributions. He's also accused of offering to pass medical marijuana legislation, again in exchange for campaign donations. The feds accuse him of accepting $10,000 in exchange for the senator's support of a contract for a health care related business. And Yee is even accused of selling a state proclamation for cash. Court documents detail many of Yee's conversations with undercover agents, including one where Yee said he knew an arms dealer with contacts in Russia and Ukraine. Senator Yee said, quote, do I think we can make some money? I think we can make some money. Do I think we can get the goods? I think we can get the goods. And the senator left the courthouse just before 7 o'clock this evening after posting a half a million dollars bail. Among the conditions of his release, he can only travel within the state of California, Liz, and he is not allowed to possess any weapons. All right, Joe, thank you. Well, this investigation stretches across the Bay Area and to Sacramento. Federal agents spent the day pouring through Yee's house in San Francisco's Sunset District. Agents loaded large boxes and computers into their cars. Agents also wheeled away box after box from Yee's office at the state capitol. You can see they confiscated a lot of stuff. Now, this was a scene in San Mateo. FBI and IRS agents left this suspected marijuana grow house with quite a haul. Agents removed several boxes and we saw these high capacity light fixtures typical of grow houses in the garage. Right now Leland Yee is holed up in his San Francisco house. He went home right after appearing in court. Normally he's more than willing to talk to us tonight. Nothing but silence. Other big player in all this, a man known as Shrimp Boy, Raymond Chow. He has a long criminal past, murder for hire, drug trafficking, arson, racketeering. He has been on the FBI's radar for quite a long time. Now, Linda Yee has been following Shrimp Boy's story for years now. Linda? Well, Ken, Raymond Chow is a notorious Chinatown gangster who terrorized this community for years. He extorted money from merchants and from gambling parlors, and he threatened to hurt anyone who didn't do what he wanted. Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow always reveled in his notoriety, admitting to me in an exclusive interview eight years ago he was a violent criminal. I have hurt people a lot, but those people, I believe they deserve it. He also showed me the ankle bracelet the feds forced him to wear after he got out of prison on oh, gun running charges. Uh, he was my... angry he had to report to Immigration Weekly and that they could track his movements. 
Everything Raymond Chow do is wrong. Everything he didn't do, we're going to put it on him anyway. In today's affidavit, the feds say Shrimp Boy asked an undercover agent to see if Senator Yee could help get that ankle monitor removed. For years, Shrimp Boy has insisted he's gone legit. Now he's the leader of the Ji Gong Tong, a Chinatown social club, and hangs out with political leaders like Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom. Last August, he was with Senator Yee at a restaurant ribbon cutting. He brags about his good deeds and how he's been recognized with proclamations from Assemblyman Tom Amiano, Mayor Ed Lee and Senator Yee. But the undercover FBI agents who infiltrated his alleged crime syndicate say, in reality, Shrimp Boy was laundering money, selling stolen arms, and contraband cigarettes. And San Francisco police believe Shrimp Boy was behind the still unsolved murder of businessman Alan Lerone, the former Tong leader who Shrimp Boy replaced as leader of the Tongs. Chow remains in a federal jail cell tonight. He did not get bail because, Ken, the feds believe he is a flight risk. Wow, interesting case. Linda, thank you for that. KPIX 5 political insider Phil Mateer joins us now. We heard Leland Yee allegedly making uh, a lot of promises. Does anybody really think that he can pull any of this off? Well, that's a big question because the first part about selling favors or trying to get people in touch with us, folks in Sacramento, they have that down. The second part about his, uh, or his promises to connect uh, these agents with gun dealers and with drug dealers, well, that might be a case of something right out of the movie American Hustle, where the, actually he and his campaign Sir, consultant were out to hustle these course. guys for some money for Lin Yee's Secretary of State campaign, only this time they were hustling federal agents, and when you do that, they don't say stop, they say dig deeper, dig deeper, here's a shovel, dig yourself into a deeper hole, and that's what he might have done. Yeah. And one of the indictments does include the fact that cash was exchanged, $5,000, for a meeting with this mysterious unknown weapons dealer. Exactly, and if you have the money change hands, then there's the crime. Uh, well, I just real quickly though, we were talking about the money, $5,000, he was $70,000, this is not a lot of money. No, it's not. It's not a lot of money for a life, it's not a lot of money for a career, but if you're in politics, sometimes it's like being at the roulette table at Vegas. You don't know when to leave, you don't know when to let go, mm. and in this, for just some campaign money, he has put his entire life in jeopardy. All right. Bill Mateer, thank you. Now, ironically, Senator Yee has been a major advocate for gun control, and in that role, Alan Martin got to know him very well. Alan? Well, it's two years ago I reported on what gun control advocates call a huge loophole in California's assault weapons ban. While the senator then championed legislation to try to close that loophole, if what federal prosecutors now say is true, Yee was on both sides of the fence of gun control and weapons trafficking. You don't want to have uh, allow the bad guys to be able to have a weapon that will continually shoot out bullets. That was Leland Yee talking with me in 2012 after he'd watched our investigative report on legal assault style weapons in California. Those guns are legal because of what's known as the bullet button. A device that allows a shooter to quickly swap magazines on AR-15 and AK-47 type rifles while still abiding by California's strict gun control laws. Because of our report, Yee introduced a bill calling for a ban on the bullet button, telling me... This is not an easy issue. I'm a father, uh, I'm, I'm an individual who really wants our communities to be safe. And uh, God forbid if somehow uh, one of these uh, weapons fall into the wrong hand. After the bill failed, Yee reintroduced it in 2013. Today, many gun advocates are pointing to what they say is true hypocrisy. The government affidavit says that in August of 2013, at the same time that Yee was pushing gun control laws, an undercover agent was being told Senator Yee, quote, had a contact who deals in arms trafficking. And in January of this year, Leland Yee himself allegedly told that same agent, the arms dealer, quote, has things that you guys want. The affidavit also says Yee claimed to know a weapons trafficker who he had known for years who was supplying cargo containers of heavy weapons to Muslim rebels in the Philippines. In the newsroom, Alan Martin, KPIX 5. He has been in politics for over 25 years. Now he joins the list of state senators, all Democrats, accused of behaving badly. Ron Calderon is accused of taking bribes. Ron Wright, Rod Wright faces voter fraud charges, and tonight, reaction to Yee's charges was fast and furious. And yet this indictment is sickening. 
I want to, on behalf of my colleagues today, call on Senator Yee to resign. On behalf of our constituents, and we're offended because we're here every day to do an honest day's work. That's shocking news uh, to me. Uh, it, it, it's uh, many years of public service, so I don't know what's occurred there. Just last week, the Society for Professional Journalists gave you an award for his efforts to strengthen government transparency and open records laws. All right, the final piece of this puzzle is a guy named Keith Jackson. He's a political consultant and a former San Francisco school board president. Tonight, he's being accused of being the middleman who brought all these players to the table. Now, parts of the criminal complaint read like a spy novel, and you can read the whole thing page by page, 137 pages in the affidavit. Go to kpix.com. Switching gears, more showers right now. Here's a